2008 pitching sessions here in Umtata. It's a beautiful day and we don't know what to expect. But all we know is we have contestants, scripts and a selection panel. Can you please share with us what your name is and where you're from? My name is Emma Mostert. I'm from Clarendon Girls High School in East London. My name is Lutlo Gaya and I'm doing grade 11. I'm Tandila Mbana and I'm from Clarendon High School. My name is Novio Gronj and I'm from East London and my school is in Tanzania. And I'm on Delam and I'm also from Clarendon High School. I am Zimkita Dodo, a grade 11 learner at Maskole High School. And what inspired you to write the script which you're going to be pitching? Our love for poetry and basically the main fact is suicide, what the youth is doing. I went to the Grahamstown Grade 11's Art Festival and the one play was about prejudice and like the one we got into a big debate afterwards about people being coconuts and then my friends were really hurt about that so then I decided that was my inspiration I wrote it virtually on that basis. I wrote my story because it's, it's something that happens in my community so I decided to write it. We've had fun doing the script so I just hope you get chosen through this and because I think our script is very good and I think our form has like a different effect on people and it's gonna get through to people the way it got through to us. We'll let you introduce yourself, tell us your name, the school you're from, then you'll have one minute to pitch your story. Uh, if you go past one minute, we hit, we'll hit the bell and stop you. Um, after that, we'll ask you some questions and we'll make a decision whether or not we want to read your script. So, you ready? Yeah. And what is your story about? Basically, our story is about a rural girl named Mbumi. A disadvantaged girl who gets a scholarship to go to Clarendon. People do want to hear about taxi drivers telling her that they are not good for her and she didn't listen. This thing affects the girl in her study at school. But what helped her is that through her matric here, she's able to get about 92% and she people come down from UCT and she gets a bursary. So they send her to UCT. She meets up with her roommate called Ava, who's like a party animal in fact. And she actually adapts to the lifestyle of Ava. Many children end up doing wrong things because of situations like this. She then becomes pregnant and becomes infected with HIV. So all that stress makes her to want to commit suicide, basically. She writes a suicide note, she goes to the bathroom, cuts off her wrist in a bath. These girls are being used and abused by these taxi drivers, and at the end of the day, they end up being false, foolish, and pregnant. He tries to save Ava, to save Bumi. Okay, and what happens then? Quickly. Inside, how are the pressure levels? I'm very, very nervous standing here. Um, I'm just hoping for the best. Okay. That's all, I'm done. Okay. Can you tell us more about the actual story, what happens in your, your screenplay? I'm confused what happens to who and what's going to happen when. And I, I don't want to try to ask you a lot of questions. Okay, so she's pregnant. And HIV. And HIV. And then she gets hit by another taxi. For me, the story doesn't hold together very well. From what you've told me so far, um, there's no sort of surprise challenge that she faces. It seems that, that her biggest challenge is to get out of her dysfunctional family, and that happens early in the story, and then everything goes well. Okay, what, what makes your story exciting? Your story does not really give me that spark to want me to read it. I'm not convinced, um, and I don't think that I'll be able to accept your script today. I'm sorry. For me, I, I don't know that it's going to be fixable as it stands. 
You really present yourself very nicely. Yes. And I imagine mm. that your writing is probably presented very yeah. nicely as well. Mm. So please, hold okay. on to that and please continue because it is, it is something that, that could have a long road for you. So well done. Thank you. Okay. I wanted to close with that line. Oh. I stole it. <laughs> but, uh, but I want to be the you nice did a great one. job. Yeah. Um, well done. Well done. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. So they didn't take it? No, they didn't. Experiences in life, wow. you can write them. You should have said that at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's there in the book. But you should have said it to us right at the beginning. I'm nervous. Yes, I want to read your script. You're nervous. You don't look um. nervous at all. <laughs> <laughs> you present yourself really yeah. well. Mm. Really, you come across very, very well. So, from here to yes. I guess it's three yeses. Yeah. Well done. Okay. Well done. We'll and script. thank you for waiting. Yeah, sorry <laughs> you had to wait so long, but it was worth it. Tell me, how was your pitch? Fantastic. <laughs> Although I was nervous at first, but when I was inspired and just mm -hmm. got the hang of it. Uh, one, six, seven. My script is called A Fish Called Pumza. Sometimes we all feel like a fish out of water. It's about a girl who's a disadvantaged girl who gets a scholarship to go to Clarendon. Uh, yes. I said um, maybe. I need a second opinion. Okay, I was yes as well. And then at school she's also teased because she has like a shabby uniform because she doesn't have lots of money. And then like lots of people are really horrible to her. But there's one girl who's nice to her, but then she gets teased for being nice to her. So then she stops kind of being in contact with her. So I, two yeses and a maybe. Then she confronts her brother and then she says, no, like I'm not black, I'm not white. My colour, you can't define me by my skin colour. At the end, is it that whole you know, yeah. thing? I found it amazing how yeah. I thought it might work, mm. that ending. Yes. Because actually, oh, you know, it's very easy for that to not work. But... Mm. I can tell by the way she's written, she, she's, there's a lot in there. Mm. And then the whole school, kind of, the whole school, but like a very large amount of the school hears this and then everyone's like, wow, yeah, <laughs> that's it. That's that's well done, Emma, who came back twice, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and, and your role as the producer is to try to free Emma up and give her this little bubble where she can focus on what's on the camera and what, it, what your actors are doing. Is there anyone in your school that you think might be capable or willing or wanting to, to tackle music for you? There are so many avenues of, of career options within the film industry, within the TV industry, that people aren't aware of. So if, if you feel there's a need for costume and you want to co coordinate it and you want to get someone doing that for you, go for it. From now to the point you're shooting your own film, what are you guys going to be doing? We have auditions that mm -hmm. we're still going to do, and persuading teachers to be in it is going to be a task. <laughs> this is our third and last stop in Islanden. The girls are looking ready to rock and roll. Let's go check if girl power is going to rock. Action! beginning of the day and I'm with the director herself. Do you have any concerns that something might go wrong? Lots. I'm very worried something will go wrong but I'm just hoping that they won't. We've tried to get everything to run smoothly in forward planning. What have you done to make sure that today's run smoothly? Not much. It's mainly my producer. I'm very lucky to have such an organized one. Um, she's really, she's done like a lot to try and get everything smooth. How is it going so far? Oh, it's been amazing to see everything come together. Um, we've just had to try and arrange extras and everything in the morning. It's been crazy, but now everything's settling down and we're just getting everything together. Do you have any concerns about the rest of the day? Um, 
I think at the moment just time is a factor, trying to finish before the end of the day and to organise our classes, but everything's going well. I think it's going to turn out nicely, yeah. With me is Gitu to the camera lady. Why are you interested in doing camera work? More than doing camera work, I just wanted to be in the film because I'm planning to be a film director. As we close it, the number gets bigger. How did you get into the crew? By luck, actually. I was in the school for a couple of days and then I heard about the opportunity and I jumped in. But it's very exciting. <laughs> Feels like an advert for a bag. <laughs> With me is Samora who plays Tobelo. How did you get the part? Um, a, friend of my, a friend of mine and I auditioned and um, he got the role, but unfortunately he couldn't do it, so I had to step in. And... How did you find acting in front of the camera? It's very different to what I'm used to. We usually do theatre. And um, that response, like I usually see people saying that was, there's no response. And the only response that you get is action and cut. It's that time again where we get the headmaster's views. So with me is Mr. Nell, headmaster of Clarendon Girls High School. Sir, can you give us a brief introduction and background to your school? Clarendon Girls High can trace its history back to 1903 when um, a co-ed school for boys and girls split into a separate boys school which later became Silvon College and a girls school that became Clarendon Girls High. The school is named after Lady Clarendon who opened this building in 1937 when she was the wife of the, the Governor General of South Africa. How do you feel about Emma's involvement in the competition? Uh, we're very proud of Emma. She entered this competition with her script, which we all found rather amusing. And um, she certainly put a lot of work into preparing uh, for the shoot today. And of course all the other girls who she's auditioned and so on are very, very excited about being part of a, a project like this. Ready? Scene 5, shot 4.2, take 2. And action! I'm with Michaela, the script supervisor. What does your job involve? Well, um, as a script supervisor, I have to make sure that everyone is, um, knows what to do, what scene it is, and make sure the actors know their lines and when to say their lines. Are you nervous about today? Um, yes, I am a bit nervous. Maybe I might forget to do something or something, something might go wrong. But I'm more excited because it's a different experience and something new that you know that I've never done before. So. That's all right. Yeah. Well, that first. We have come to the end of the day, and I'm back with the director. Emma, did you get what you wanted when you first wrote your story? Um, I think I pretty much did. It's often when I hear the lines being said, it doesn't sound as great as it somehow sounded better when I was writing it, but pretty much, yeah. I'm with the lead actress, Zizi Po plays Pumza. Now I've heard you're nothing like your character. Why do you think Emma chose you to play the part? Um, I'm not quite sure, because I saw some actresses who seemed like they were better than me, but I think it's the experience I have in theatre. What was the hardest part of playing Pumza? Well... It was so lonely and I could feel what Pumza felt and since I'm not anything like her, it was like terrible. Girls, you've just seen the first cut, so basically you have an idea of how your film will look. How do you feel about what you saw? I'm actually quite impressed that oh. I thought it was going to end up kind of corny looking, but it, it works. Is there anything you guys would like to change in the film? Not really, I just want to see the final cut. I'm just excited. See everything put together and with the music. Oh, it's going to be amazing. I don't need to join in now. Oh, not that school again. I saw that school. Sitena's school. Sitena's school. Walk out one in Guatumas school. My chinchabangas school of Pumza. That's correct as a school is yana. 
and say to Rasa Scolasiana. As was Mamma and Malu Patrasa Scolas in Sinja. Come in the Mali Lena, but no better than everyone. When come on, Tabella? Is any test? Okay, yes, ma'am. Was both fun and don't know the Scholarship <laughs> You might have seen me outside the school waiting for a taxi. You don't look that familiar though. Um, no, today's my first day. Oh, what school did you go to before, Clarida? Um, You won't really know it. It's a rural school. We can't afford a school like this. I got a scholarship. Oh, well done. Christine! Hey! How are you? I'm good, how are you? And uh, who's your little friend? And this is... Bumza. Catching up on homework this whole week. So you've seen me here? Yes. What are you really doing here, Ponzo? Especially in this classroom. Why don't you go outside playing the sunshine with your friends? I don't have friends here, except maybe Christine Reuters. Everyone else teases me at home and at school. Do your mum and dad tease you as well? 
No, they're really nice about it. It's my brother. He says that I've changed and that I'm just trying to be like a white person. And all the girls, they say that I'm a suck up and a know it all. Do you think you've changed? No, but if I have, it's stuff like the way I talk. My English has improved hugely. It's just that my brother can't see past my new accent. Have you told your brother what you've just told me? These things need to be sorted out, Pims, and the sooner you do it, the better. Because the longer you leave it, the worse it's going to become. What do you think about that? So, how was school today? It was great, hey. I had physical science. It was quite difficult, but I enjoyed it. And then I had English, which was the best. English, the yeah. best? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to eat So, I'm going coconut. I bought Tobela out in. Do you coconut? Coconut, coconut, coconut. Stuck up, little coconut. I'm stopping a pack at brown pants. Forget to balade me, man. You know what? You may tease me all you want. Because inside, you and I both know this is who I really am. Yes, my accent might have changed, yes, but that is it. You say I'm like the people I go to school with and that I'm not being true to myself. But I don't fit in here because I'm poor. I look shabby and I'm not black enough. I'm not white enough. I don't fit into any group. This is who I really am. Me, the one and only me. I am sick of being treated like I'm not worth a part of you. I'm lost in your world, I'm scared and bleeding because I'm different to you. What if I told you about my story? Would my words get through to you?